Good morning and a uh, warm welcome to you all. May I? Good morning. A warm welcome to you all and watching online. It's Easter Sunday, the greatest day of the year. And uh, you're very welcome. A quick notice to get out of the way. Apparently on the notice sheet and the email, it says coffee morning is half past 10. Of course it's 10 o'clock, you all know that. We're going to begin our worship with the traditional Easter shout. And it goes like this. Um, I'm going to say Christ is risen. You're going to respond. And we'll do that twice. And then the next slide is hallelujah. So that's the way. Okay. Shall we um, make sure you shout nice and loud? Else we'll have to do it again. Okay, a uh, special welcome if you're visiting us today, by the way. It's good to see you here with us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Not yet. We're doing that twice. We'll have to start again now. This is the first time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. From Luke chapter 24, the story of Easter morning. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. It's a day of celebration. We're going to sing, Come, people of the risen King.
Thank you. Please do sit. Good voices today. Lots of singing to celebrate. Um, one voice all around the world singing hallelujah today. And while I was stood yet 10 minutes ago, I had a buzz and it was a message from America. Brad Womble, some of you will remember, saying happy Easter. So I took a picture from here, so some of you might be in it, and sent it back to him. And uh, he loves the fact that we've got the baptistry open today and we're celebrating Easter with baptism. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, when you were taken before Herod and Pilate, when you suffered in agony on the cross, and when your body was sealed in a tomb, it looked as though evil had triumphed as though love, goodness, and truth had finally been defeated. But you rose again, love triumphant, goodness vindicated, truth victorious. Living Lord, to you be the praise and the glory. Your enemies had done their worst, mocking you, beating you, nailing you to a cross, and for three days it seemed that hatred, deceit, and violence had won the battle. But you rose again, renewing, restoring, redeeming. Living, Lord, to you be the praise and glory. It looked as though hope was groundless, faith futile, the future empty, for your purpose appeared to be destroyed, broken beyond redemption. But you rose again, reviving confidence, rekindling trust, recreating life itself. Living Lord, to you be the praise and the glory. Your friends had failed you when you needed them most, betraying you, denying you, abandoning you, and they were consumed by guilt and shame. But you rose again, forgiving accepting, affirming, living, Lord, to you be the praise and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, it's hard sometimes not to question, not to be perplexed at life's injustices and ask if your kingdom can ever truly come. But you rose again, light in our darkness, faith in our confusion, heaven touching earth, Living Lord, to you be the praise and the glory for your name's sake. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a couple of action songs. Now, I've got some space at the front if children want to come up and do the actions. Do we? <laughs> I've got all this space up here. Sienna's going to come. Uh, she and Ezra, are you coming? We're going to do Our God is a Great Big God first. There might be Easter eggs in it for you. <laughs> but you have to look happy about it. <laughs> Let's uh, stand together. You're tired? Do you know this one, Sienna? Yeah. Let's stand and uh, thank you, Graham. Carla, do it. Face this way. Our God.
stay there, we've got more. This is, even, this is even more lively for you. Sing a song to celebrate. Jesus is alive, you know. He's risen from the dead. Hallelujah. You can go and sit for a couple of seconds, but I need you back in a minute. Don't go too far. Thank you, Ray. Please do sit. We're going to give thanks for the offering on this special day. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've given to us, for the new life we've spoken about and sung about, for the joy that you give us today. And we give back to you these monies that they may be used that women and men and boys and girls all over the world might hear about the great news that Jesus is alive. We worship you. Amen. Thank you, Ray. I didn't give you an egg, did I? I said I might give you an egg. I might in a minute. Um, two Sundays ago, we had a craft afternoon. And uh, by the way, you might have come in this morning and been a bit confused. 
by all these boxes. There's a cross there, which is beautiful. You can't see it quite yet, but you will. And it's got some lovely flowers at the bottom. Are they lilies? Last year I called them something else, I think, but they are lilies. We've got this funny board, which we don't normally have. We've got this thing that we don't normally have. And the chairs are awkward, and we've got a hole in here with water. You might have come in saying, what on earth's happening? You might have been a bit confused. Well, we'll probably add to that in a minute. But we've got some pictures of our craft day, I think. This was the uh, invitation, and this was setting up, and this was in the back room when people arrived. Over 50 people we had here that Sunday afternoon, 24 children, I think, and there were seven different crafts set up for them. Uh, they were designing eggs out the back, and I've got some of the eggs here. Some are very creative, and some are done by one-year-olds. Um, and that's what they were doing there. Everybody was enjoying it. Then they came in and started on the crafts, and the place was buzzing. It was a good, great day, actually. And then they were telling me things that they were thankful for, things that were alive. And I put donkeys down because it was... Palm Sunday is donkeys, isn't it? It wasn't that Sunday, but uh, somebody said horses, strawberries, ducks, family. That was a good one to have. Sheep, cats, bunnies, fish, trees, chicks, dogs, dolphins, squirrels, mummy, God. And then somebody said Lola and Sally. They are the dogs. And then she mentioned dad as well afterwards. They were grateful. There's the crafts that they did. There's uh, some crosses, some eggs, all about new life and the resurrection of Jesus, the story of his death and resurrection. Crosses there and uh, bunnies and chicks as well. So thanks for that, um, Colin. Um, we also did this, and I talked a little bit about how, how excited the disciples were on that first Sunday, when they'd been so down, they got so excited, they were like shaking. And this machine helped us do that. So if I push that button. And then you get off. And you sort of, as excited, oh, as excited as a disciple on Easter Sunday. <laughs> and they all loved having a go at this. So if you want to have a go, um, you can come and have a go during the morning. I'll leave it on 16. I won't put it up to 20 because that's a bit high. Anybody want to have a go from the back corner? Come on then. Would you like to have a go? Come on. Just a quick go, because we haven't got all day. <laughs> Up you get now, Sienna. Oh, you weren't here, were you? So you haven't done this before. Is that fun? Is it good? <laughs> Turn that way. <laughs> okay. Coming up. You like that? Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Your face is wobbling. Okay. Good boy. Oh, Arla wants to go as well. Jump off then. You can have another go later, okay? You want to go? Okay, now, let's um, come with me now over this side. You can come and help as well if you like, because all of these boxes are here. We might need um, 
a mummy or a daddy to help this in a minute because I've got 23 boxes that make a jigsaw. It's like a jigsaw, yeah. So all the... It, yeah, well, it could be. You've got to try and make that into a completed jigsaw. So all the bits that are facing you are in the right space. And I'll give you a clue. I think there's a heart involved, but I've forgotten now, and I didn't take a picture when I started. This, this uh, jigsaw has been up there, so I've seen it every Sunday since I've been here, but we've got to try and recreate that now. Can you see anywhere where we could start? Okay, you, tr you have a go at that for a moment, whilst they are doing that. Um, it's like Easter's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. If you only take one of the bits, like the denial on Thursday night at the supper, or the betrayal, or if you only take the cross, it's like it doesn't fit, it doesn't work. You need to have the whole picture. And that's why on Friday we had that video. It said, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And now on Sunday we can look back over the week and see it. It all fits into place. And as long as somebody knows what the big picture looks like, we should be okay. But if that somebody has forgotten what the big picture looks like, we might be in trouble. But God... It's God's picture of Easter, his plan from the beginning to bring new life, life eternal to all his people. Joe, why don't you get up and help them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did a bit. You've put the three and the 16 together. That should help. Oh. Is, uh, and we've got maybe a J somewhere, have we? Oh, now it's coming, look. Good. That looks like it could be a word. Do you think that could be a word, couldn't it? Do you think that goes on top of there? No. Anybody got some green? I'll let them carry on with that for a minute. <laughs> Let's sing a song while they're doing that, shall we? Um, led like a lamb to the slaughter.
if you uh, have a seat, yes, if you can see, yeah, just a second, the team, the children did fantastically well, so you, uh, you can see it, there we are, the finished picture, and it's all about love and faith. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not die, but have eternal life. John 3.16. It's about love. I, I, the heart was a bit... I, there was not really a heart there. Was there a red heart? I thought there was, but it's the blue one. Well done, team. Do you want an Easter egg for that? I think you deserve... They're only little ones. <laughs> Take a couple. Good. Take some for Allah as well. Yeah, take two for Allah. Okay, do you want one? You know where to go. Let's uh, read some more scripture from Luke chapter 24. This was um, Jesus coming to them in the upper room that evening of the first day. While they were still talking about it, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they'd saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? Why do, you, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And why they still did not believe it, because of their joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. We thank God for his word. And a wonderful picture there of what the resurrection life is like. Jesus has flesh and bones. The body he has is changed, but ultimately it's still flesh and bones. And he eats with them in his risen, resurrected body. And his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave proved all that he had said about himself was true and that he is the way to the Father. Only by putting our trust and faith in him will we have that life that John 3.16 talks about. Um, we've got a little video watch which tells us again about the meaning, the true meaning of Easter. Is Easter about all those chocolate eggs we give in this wonderful season? There's no doubt they are a treat, but it's not what we eat that's important, and here is the reason. Though chocolate eggs are all very fine, for 2,000 Easter's gone by, it's the stories of Jesus that people have told. How he died, but God raised him on high. For one day long ago, the saddest of days, Wicked people put Jesus to death, and he died for your sins, and for mine, and for all. 
and he loved till his very last breath. On that first Easter morning, all full of tears, came the women, their bags full of spices to lay on his body. But there at the tomb were two angels, all full of surprises. He's not here, he is risen, said the two shining ones. He's alive again, raised from the dead. So they rushed off to tell all the other disciples all the angels had said. You're joking, said most of them. That sort of thing doesn't happen, as well you should know. But Peter and John ran straight off to the tomb, as fast as they ever could go. I wonder what we'll find inside, they were thinking, and wondering if they would dare to poke their heads in there. But when they arrived, it was true, there was nobody there. The women were right, Jesus was alive, and over the next 40 days, they met him again and again, and he taught them more of his wonderful ways. When two of them walked on the road to Emmaus, so sad because they thought he was dead, he walked and he talked with them, joined in their meal, and they knew him when he broke the bread. When one of his followers doubted, he said, come here touch my hand and my side and Thomas soon realized he wasn't a ghost my lord and my god he replied and when the disciples went out on their boat they didn't catch all they could wish a mysterious stranger stood on the shore and gave them a net full of fish it's the lord exclaimed Peter and leapt overboard the waters closed over his head but he and the others got safely to Jesus. Come and have breakfast, he said. So, Easter's much more than a chocolate egg, though chocolate eggs are just fine. It tells us of Jesus who rose from the grave and forgives all our sins, yours and mine. And he walks with us today as we go on our way and still calls us from the shore because Easter is every day here in our hearts and Jesus lives forevermore. Thanks to our friends from the Bible Society for another video. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we remember the trauma which your suffering and death brought to your followers, a grief which went beyond words and which seemed beyond healing. We recall how Peter wept bitterly when he realized he denied you as you predicted, how women sobbed on the way to the cross as they watched you die, how Mary broke down in the garden overwhelmed with grief each one a symbol of the desolation and despair so many felt at your death. But we recall also how Peter rejoiced as three times you repeated your call, how your followers celebrated as you stood among them, risen and victorious, how Mary's heart soared with wonder as you spoke her name. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, grant your joy. We pray for those who suffer today, all who endure constant pain, who wrestle with illness, who are victims of violence or whose bodies are broken by accident or injury. We pray for those who feel betrayed today, cheated by loved ones, deceived by those they trusted, hurt by those they counted as friends, or let down by society. Lord, wherever there is sorrow, grant your joy. We pray for those who grieve today, their hearts broken by tragedy and bereavement, their lives torn apart, many for whom tears are a constant companion, laughter and happiness like some distant memory. Lord Jesus, reach out into our world of so much pain, heartache and sadness. May your light scatter the shadows, your love lift the burdens, and your grace bring life in all its fullness. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, grant your joy. We ask it in your name. 
Amen. Now we're going to move towards baptism. And uh, I'm going to invite Meiji to come to the front and to tell why she is being baptized today. Um, welcome, come. Do you want to go on there first? <laughs> no. Now, before you start, tell everybody how to pronounce your name. Okay. Uh, my name is Meiji. Meiji. M-E-I-J-E. Meiji. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Mm, when I was a childhood, I grew up in a small village in the Philippines. My father was a tricycle driver, and my mom uh, did a laundry to make a living. As the eldest daughter, I was expected to, to cook and care for my brother and sisters, but get into trouble with my neighbors, climbing their trees for fruit, and had many scrapes and marks from my adventures. I was a little bit naughty sometimes. Um, so the main religion in the Philippines was Catholic, and my parents were strict Catholics, both deeply involved in the local church where I was a choir girl. That was my belief before starting college. It was very difficult for me going through college with no real support from anywhere as my family did not have the means to pay, but I was determined to study and qualify as a nurse. When taking my board exam after gaining my degree, my professor was a Christian who encouraged me to pray for my result. This made a big impression that I prayed hard to pass my exam. I really felt Jesus helped me to succeed despite my circumstances. I'm still being a Catholic. I was first taken to a Christian church by my son who had found faith in Jesus and told me faith in Jesus was more than a ritual but that we could pray directly to God through Jesus. I did not continue to attend as I was working mostly in Saudi Arabia at that time, it was during that period I met Phil, who was also a Christian, and we began to talk about faith. When I finished my contract in 2018, I came back to Manila. I stayed with my sister and family, also a Christian, and started attending church regularly with them at the Victory Church. As a young adult, I faced some very difficult and challenging circumstances in my private life over the years following my graduation. At times, I felt hopeless, but always gained strength knowing that God would bring me through and it helped me so much through the time. But it was 
under the ministry of victory, where I came to know the true, the true need uh, I had as a sinner of forgiveness through Jesus' sacrifice. So why baptism now? Back in, tw in 2020, I was ready to baptize and had done session with Victory Church to prepare for my baptism on 14th of March, 2020. Phil was due to arrive that day for a four weeks. Unfortunately, the president announced restriction because of the COVID-19. We're starting and everything was canceled. This is now the right time for me to finish what was started four years ago. Since coming to the UK, I struggled to settle and found myself becoming very depressed, especially without a job to take my spiritual uh, home where I could find peace with myself. I, since coming to Mount Pleasant, I have found it to be a very warm and welcoming to be a welcoming place and it's just felt right for me. I have enjoyed the meetings and getting involved in some of other activities more recently and hope to continue with this as much as my new job allows. Happy Easter everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Stay So the question that I ask, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Bless you. Okay, you may go and sit for a moment. So we've got the water uh, here, thanks to Jeremy and Susan who've been up very early filling it this morning. Uh, we hopefully, we'll be able to get the camera on it so you can see it on the screen. Uh, youngsters, if you want to come a bit closer, you are welcome to do that on the side there, maybe. Um, but what is this all about? What is the baptism about? Well, this... Uh, yeah, just a sec. It is getting dunked, yes. Um, but it's more than that. It's about... Uh, uh, this is symbolic... Of so this is an outward expression of what's happened inwardly. So uh, Maiti just told us about the change that's gone on in her life since she's met Jesus and accepted him as Savior. And this is symbolic of that change now. It's also symbolic of cleansing, obviously. Water has always been used as a symbol of cleansing. Now don't get too close, you, okay? <laughs> I don't want you in there yet. Um, Baptism is always it's all, also uh, about death and resurrection. So as we go down in water, it's symbolizing the death of the old person and coming up out of the water is like the resurrection to new life, a new person, if you like. And baptism's a very personal thing. You've heard a very personal story, but it's also a corporate thing. It's about us as a church so that Meiji becomes baptized into our church and becomes one of our members and joins the fellowship here. And uh, so it, this is a very simple act, but it's a profound statement of our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, if you've got questions about baptism uh, after today, please do uh, talk to me about it. Yes. You've got a question. Ask me afterwards because I probably don't have the answer yet. Okay, we're going to sing a song while we get read. Um, See what a morning, gloriously bright.
Good, is, this is working. Let's go around the other side. Oh, I need to get my towel. Not got it, Col? Okay, if you want to come a bit closer, if you've not seen a baptism before and you'd like to come and stand around the sides, uh, feel free to do that so that you can see we're struggling with the picture, it seems. So, Meiji, our sister, upon confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for Meiji today. We thank you for her testimony, for her faith, and for her baptism. Thank you that you have changed her life. You've made her whole. Thank you that in this place she's found a spiritual home. And we pray again now that you'd pour your Holy Spirit upon her today and every day, that she may be a witness to many people in this area and across the world, that her faith would speak to others of your love and your life. Amen. Where are we? That's almost the end of our service. Do uh, join us in the back room for coffee, biscuits, tea, etc. Um, and as I said, if you've got questions about faith, about baptism or membership, please do speak to me at some point. We're going to sing our final hymn, a great old resurrection hymn, Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son.
So I've got lots of little eggs left. So do come and take one afterwards. I'll put them on the table there so that you don't come to the pool. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all this Easter day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.